Hi Naptime friends, it's Tish with Naptime Creations. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Today we're going to be doing a clear coat on an acrylic pour I made previously. Here's a little list of the materials you'll need. You can pause it if you want to and check out the list, but I'm going to be going over each item one by one in the video. So here's my acrylic pour. It's a 12 by 24 I made previously. The first thing you want to do is make sure your piece is totally level with a level. Make sure you check it vertically and horizontally. You want it to be totally level because resin is self-leveling and if you're off even just a little bit your resin can run off which is not fun but it's an easy fix by just doing another clear coat. Then I could like to go in with a baby wipe and clean off my my painting. Um, you could use a paper towel but I don't recommend it because it can leave fibers on your painting which is just like another little piece of dust that you don't want on there right? And then I like to tape the back with duct tape and to keep my piece propped up off my table I like to use spray paint can lids. Resin will peel right off of those. You could also use uh, cups like solo cups or painters pyramids. You're also going to need tweezers and toothpicks to pick out any dust or debris that might land up in your wet resin and an LED light. You could use a LED flashlight. This is just a little light that I have that's an LED light but I like to use my tabletop ring light. You can really spot dust and debris with that with those LED lights and it's very very helpful. So I have my measuring cup here. It's just a plastic four cup measuring cup. I have my little stir sticks to stir up my resin. I'm going to be using a new resin today. This is the Woodcrafters Epoxy from the Epoxy Resin Store. Oh, and you're also going to need a, I like to use these Sterilite containers to keep my piece dust and debris free. After I'm all done, I will place that container over my piece to make sure no dust lands in it while it's drying. You're also going to need a heat gun or a torch to pop any bubbles. So we're going to jump right in and start measuring out our resin. So this is the resin I'm going to be using today. It's the Woodcrafters Epoxy Resin from the Epoxy Resin Store. I will link all their information down below. And if you want to check them out, um, please do so. They have all kinds of resin for every project you'll need. And if you use code NAPTIME20, you'll save 20% on your order, which is amazing. So I'm just going in with my resin here in my measuring cup and I like to always pour my part B in first. Part A is always thicker so when you pour your part A in first, if you do pour your part A in first, it can kind of stick to the sides of the cup a lot and it's just easier to mix your resin if you pour your part B in your cup first. So for this piece, I'm going to use about five, five ounces of resin. I know you're probably thinking, wow, that's not very much resin, but honestly, you don't need very much. I know if you go to sites and look up, you know, a resin calculator, it'll tell you you need a whole bunch of resin, but I'm telling you, you don't because if you use too much resin on a canvas, it will sag in the middle and it's just not fun to try to correct that. It's totally correctable, but you have to sand it and then reinforce the back of your canvas with cardboard and then do another clear coat. So it's just easier to start out with a small amount. And I found that about three ounces for a 12 by 12 is good. So five or six ounces for a 12 by 12, 12 by 24 is a perfect amount of resin. So then I just poured in my part A. You could see that part A is a little bit thicker and then you just stir and this epoxy the woodcrafters epoxy you mix anywhere from three to five minutes but I'll show you here check it out do you see how it looks kind of milky in the center there it really reminds me of I, I always want to say saltwater taffy when you first start mixing it it looks cloudy and thick but then after you've mixed it all the way, it will be totally clear. And I'll show you that. And I am not going to be um, fast forwarding any parts of this video. Just because if you're new to resin and, you know, you're trying to learn, it's kind of hard when everything is sped up. So this video is going to be a little bit longer. But it's definitely, you know, one of those things I was really intimidated when I first started out with resin. 
So I can totally relate if anybody out there is watching this and they've never worked with resin before and they're a little bit like, oh, I don't know what this stuff is, I'm afraid to use it, but I promise you once you use it, you'll be like, oh my gosh, what was I so worried about? And you'll love working with resin. It's a really fun medium to work with and it's just so shiny. I love how shiny resin is. It's amazing. And especially on acrylic pores, it really, really brings life back into the paint and um, especially metallics too. If you like to use metallics like I do, then you'll really, really love doing a resin top coat on your acrylic pores. So just keep stirring your resin here and you make sure you scrape the sides of your cup, the bottom of your cup, and you don't wanna stir super fast. See, I'm kind of going a little bit slow, just kind of folding the resin just keep mixing and mixing and after three to five minutes you will see I'm just wiping my piece off again making sure no dust got on there see how it's totally clear it doesn't look milky in the middle anymore there are some bubbles but it's okay because we're gonna pop those with the heat gun anyway it's no big deal so here you see you just go in and pour your resin straight on your piece I like to start kind of in the middle. I always like to make sure the top is covered first and then worry about the edges. So I was just checking to see how many ounces I had just poured on there. I was aiming to pour about four ounces on and then I'm gonna reserve the other ounce or two for the edges. So now I'm gonna go in with my heat gun and just pop any bubbles, warm up the resin so it's easier to spread out with my gloved hand. You always, always wanna wear gloves when you're working with resin and they have to be the nitrile gloves. Those gloves are the ones that resin, you know, it can't eat through them or get onto, you don't wanna get resin on your skin at all. If you do get resin on your skin, make sure you stop what you're doing and go wash it immediately with warm water and soap. And I also am wearing a full face respirator. I always wear a full face respirator when I work with resin. That's what you can see the little strap coming in the camera right there. So then you just go in and smooth it out nice and easy. I just like to, you know, start in the middle and then push it out towards the sides just like this. Some people like to use um, tools. You can get a hair dyeing kit that has uh, silicone. It's a silicone um, kit where all the tools are made out of silicone. The resin won't stick to silicone or it's easier to clean off and then if your resin cures on there you can just peel it off the next day. But I like to use my hands because you can feel where there's a dry spot on your canvas and it's not as easy to do that when you're working with tools. So here you can see I'm kind of just taking my finger going from the middle and working it over onto the edge kind of pushing it out and over out and over. And like I said you don't want to have too much resin in the middle of your canvas because resin is heavy and it can pool and then that's going to cause pulling from the um, edge of your piece and if that happens to you it's not that big of a deal all you have to do is give it a sand and then reinforce the back with some cardboard and then give it another clear coat it, it's happened to me before because like I said, I was using a resin calculator and it was telling me to use like eight ounces on a 12 by 12 canvas, which was a lot of resin. And I didn't know that, but for 12 by 24, I would say five or six ounces is a great amount. So here I'm just going in on the edges, as you could see, smoothing out that resin, making sure all the edges are nice and covered. So just keep smoothing everything out, make, go over everything two or three times, make sure you get the top and the edges and the corners all nice and covered. And if you guys want to see how I made this acrylic pour, I will link that creation video down below in the description. This one was a lot of fun to make. It's an infinity pour and that technique is really, really easy. Even beginners can do it. So just go check that video out 
and see how I made it if you want to know more about that. So here I'm just going on the edges and adding a tiny bit more resin just along the very edge of the canvas here just to make sure that those edges are nice and covered. I'm going back over my piece, going over every little section, top to bottom, making sure that every little spot is covered with resin. And, you know, if you do run into problems, it can always be fixed with another clear coat. So it's not that big of a deal, you know, if you have a piece of dust that lands in it that you didn't see, or pet hair, if you guys have pets, you know, that pet hair, you know, my dog, I have a Shizu, he is not allowed in my art room, but what happens is you have pet hair on your clothes, so that can get into your resin art. So what I like to do is take a lint roller and basically lint roll myself, make sure there's no pet hair on me before I even do resin. So that's one tip you can do to avoid that from happening. I have a few pieces in my art room that have a uh, chewy hair in it that I need to sand and get the hair out and then do another clear coat of resin on it. My little dog's named Chewy. <laughs> so here I'm just going in again, smoothing everything out, making sure it's all nice and covered. And now I'm going to go in with my heat gun and pop any bubbles. And before you use your heat gun, what you want to do is point it away from your piece for about 5 seconds, 5-10 seconds, because dust can land up in your heat gun depending on how it's stored. Uh, so you just want to make sure you know you're not turning your heat gun on straight onto your piece and blowing dust on there. So just point it away from your piece, 5-10 seconds, get any dust out of there that might have settled up in there. Now I'm going to go in with my tabletop ring light. I love this ring light. It's um, got three legs and it just sits right on your table. So you can pick it up and move it around really easily. It's really great for spotting um, dust and debris. So see, I just hold it right over my piece and I'm using a toothpick. I prefer using a toothpick over tweezers. Um, you could also use like a wooden skewer and just kind of scoop any dust that may have landed up in there right off of your piece. See, just kind of scoop it out and then I kind of just wipe it off on my wax paper. And you're going to want to protect your table. I should have said this at the beginning, but uh, to protect my table, I always like to use wax paper. You can use wax paper, parchment paper, freezer paper, plastic tablecloths, or black trash bags. Resin will not stick to those, so it just peels right off the next day, which is nice. And here I'm just going in with a little bit more resin around the edges, just like this, just to make sure those edges are nice and covered. I was just taking the tiniest bit and adding that on there. I'm going to go in with my heat gun one more time, just to pop any bubbles that may have gotten on the piece. Make sure you get your edges too when you're popping bubbles. So if you guys are new to resin and you do acrylic pouring, um, I definitely encourage you if you guys are thinking about trying resin, give it a try. It's a lot of fun. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. But one thing I love about resin is you can always, if anything goes wrong, you can always fix it really easily. So here I was just going in with my light again, making sure no dust landed in there. I'm taking my fingers and running them along the bottom of the piece to make sure there's no drips before I take it to my dust-free zone. And I'm going to let this dry for 24 hours. And I'm just going to place that Sterilite tote that I showed at the beginning of the video over the top of it to keep it dust and debris free. Just make sure there's no dust in there before you place it over the top of your piece. I also wanted to show you one way to clean out your mixing cups. So this cup has been sitting for 24 hours 
And what I did to get kind of the resin started was just kind of squeeze the rim of the cup and that broke it free a little bit. And then you can start to pull. And as long as your parts A and B are 100% mixed, you will be able to peel the resin out in just one piece. So you can do that to clean out your cups or you can take some 91 or 99% isopropyl alcohol and a baby wipe or a paper towel and just clean it out that way. Just squirt some in the bottom and then keep cleaning it until it's all clean. Or you can peel it out like this. It's kind of fun to do it this way. And I forgot to mention all of my materials I used will be linked below in the description. I get a lot of stuff off Amazon like my heat gun and my LED tabletop ring light. Links for everything will be down below in the description, so be sure to check out the description if you want to pick up anything that I used in this video. So here we are. It's all dry, but can you see those little drips from the resin? So I'll show you how easy it is to pull this tape. The drips come right off. And the tape, duct tape is very sticky, so it may pull off some of the paint on the back of your piece which is no big deal to me because I paint the whole entire back white anyway after this is all finished. And you'll know your piece is finished when it's been 24 hours later and there's no sticky spots. Everything is nice and dry and shiny just like glass. So here it is, all nice and finished, hung up on the wall. Look at how pretty. The resin just really makes that paint come alive, especially metallics. If you use metallics in your acrylic pores, resin just really makes them so beautiful. Look at that gold, really nice and pretty. I love this section right here. It reminds me of water, like a golden, beautiful golden ocean or something like that. What do you guys think? If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, I definitely encourage you though to give resin a try if you're new to resin. It's a lot of fun. And um, check out the epoxy resin store. You can use discount code NAPTIME20 for anything in their store and get 20% off your order. They have some awesome, awesome resins, um, resin for any project that you're working on. They also have jacquard um, pearlex pigments, resin tints, alcohol inks, all kinds of stuff. So just go check them out. Uh, I'll link all their information down below in the description. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you guys are all doing good and you're having a great day. And you guys all have a great weekend, and I will see you guys on Monday for another video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye.